Piecewise defined functions are defined by more than one equation. So here's an example of the function f of x, and we can see that there's two different parts to this equation. So it's saying f of x is equal to x squared if the x value is less than or equal to 1, and f of x equals 2 if x is greater than 1. So we'll start by evaluating some function values here. So let's say we want to find f of 0. So in this function, we have to tell which, which equation we're going to plug into, which piece of this equation we're going to plug into. So our x value here is 0, so that would be when x is this in this range from x less than or equal to 1. So we'll plug in the 0 here for x squared. So 0 squared would give us 0. If we wanted to find f of 5, we'd plug in an x value of 5 here. Well, x is 5 in this region when x is greater than 1, so that's telling us use this equation when x is equal to 5. So that means your f of x is equal to 2. So that means that f of 5 is equal to 2. There's nothing even to plug in because that's a constant. So we'll first need to be able to evaluate function values for piecewise functions. Then we want to talk about their graphs. So generally, the definitions are written with the, as you go from top to bottom, the left piece and the right piece. So you want to start thinking, and it's really important in this course in general, to think left to right when you're doing your graphs. So this, when x is less than or equal to 1, that would be the left piece. And then here, when x is greater than 1, that's moving to the right. So this is your right piece. So this definition tells us that the left piece is going to be shaped like an x squared function. So from our library of functions, we know that's going to be a parabola. And the right piece is going to be a constant function, so a horizontal linear function. Okay, so we can write down here that our left piece will be a parabola, and our right piece is going to be a constant function. So we know that's going to be a horizontal line. So generally you can say this graph is going to like, look like a piece of a parabola on the left and a piece of a constant function, a horizontal line, on the right. So here, these are the boundaries, the domain of each piece, and those are important when you're sketching these, and we'll go into more detail um, in the next video. But for now, just to give you an idea of what this shape is going to look like, we make a little sketch here. Just a few important points. Okay, so we know when x is everywhere from negative infinity up and including 1, so x less than or equal to 1, that's from negative infinity to 1, it's going to look like a parabola. So we know some key points on a parabola from our uh, transformations that we've done recently. We know we've got negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1, and that's actually where this piece stops. So if we start all the way left from negative infinity and go all the way up until x is 1, that's my left piece. So my domain of that left piece was negative infinity to 1. So we can even remind you and write that in interval notation, negative infinity to 1. So from negative infinity to 1, it looks like a parabola. Then at 1, it splits, and now it's going to jump up to a constant function, which is a horizontal line where the y value is 2. So I'll go up where my y value is 2. And now I'm going to put an open circle there because there's no equal sign on this inequality here. So that means it's just past 1 where this piece starts. So then I'm just going to continue my horizontal line infinitely to the right, use my arrow to indicate infinitely. So part of the piecewise defined functions is knowing these inequalities, being able to picture that left to right. And it might help if you write these in interval notation, so here from 1 to infinity, that might help you start to visualize these a little more easily. And then notice, when this graph jumps and splits at 1, this circle, this boundary is included because of the equal sign here. 
But then here when it jumps up, it's not included here because remember, if it's a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. And if we drew a vertical line and both of these were filled in, we would hit that vertical line twice, which would mean it wouldn't be a function. So when you have splits like this that are lined up vertically and they split at a certain point, one could be filled in and one would be open, or they would both be open, but they both would not be filled in.